All right, everybody, welcome to today's video. And today's video is a little different than it was originally intended when I filmed it uh, with my good friend, Wade Ogle. Uh, today uh, was supposed to be a video covering the three convertible Hemi E-bodies that uh, are in the Ogle collection. Well, while I was editing the video after we filmed it, I put it all together and it was almost an hour long. I am the um, stories and history behind all of these cars is truly remarkable and it just blew up into a massive video and we figured that after several conversations back and forth with Wade and I discussing what we thought was best to, for these cars and this video we decided the best uh, thing to do was to break it up into three individual videos and so today is the first of three in a mini series on the Hemi E-Body Convertibles in the Ogle Collection. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the Sublime Green 1970 Hemi Challenger Convertible. So that's enough of me rambling here at the introduction. Uh, go ahead and enjoy this video. Behind us is what is known in the Mopar community, I guess, is the Holy Trinity. The 70 Hemi Cuda Convertible, the 70 Hemi Challenger Convertible, and the 71 Hemi Cuda Convertible. Um, My nickname yes. is Trifecta. But, uh, Brilliant. you know, I, I'm at, at completely loss of any attempt to be modest. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it, it is truly amazing to not only see one of these cars, but all three of them in one collection is, is truly amazing. And each one of these is an amazing specimen for each year. Um, and it's, it's just really incredible. Now, for those that don't know, 71 for the Challenger, they did not have any Hemi Cuda convertibles, is that correct? That's right. Uh, in fact, uh, the biggest engine you could get would was the 383 oh. with the four barrel only because the the model that wasn't available in 71 was the RT convertible interesting so the the biggest engine you could get would be whatever would be available in the non RT package mm -hmm. so which would be the 383 four barrel as a as a, a JH mm -hmm. uh, uh, coded rather than JS for the sport interesting for the RT mm -hmm. okay so yeah, so you literally have one of each of the convertibles for the for the e-bodies that ever existed. That was my goal, and <laughs> uh, yep, yeah, and that that is exactly right. Yeah, so so Challenger's actually being the rarest mm -hmm. because you, uh, you're exactly right that inaugural year, 1970, not only for the the Challenger being released, but the one and only year that the Challenger RT convertibles were made at all. Wow, and uh, and. Not that they couldn't have made them, in, the Chrysler or Dodge couldn't have made them in 71, mm -hmm. they more or less just chose not to. Interesting. Uh, that stage of the game, convertibles bulls were starting to be phased out. Right. Um, other manufacturers simply never option, uh, offered their most exotic engines in a convertible package. Mm -hmm. Chrysler was really the only one to do it. Yeah. Uh, and they sold, of course, very, very few of them, but, uh, but that, that ended up being a one-year-only option. And for the Challenger, they only made nine of them, correct? There are different numbers that, uh, that, that are discussed. So, mm -hmm. so the numbers that, that are available today, yeah. as far as production numbers, uh, the U.S. production numbers are very well known. Mm -hmm. Nine is that, okay. that number, okay. and that's five four speeds and uh, four automatics. Then there there are records of those cars also shipped into Canada, mm -hmm. and that's uh, three of those. Oh, okay. And international shipments are undocumented, meaning mm -hmm. there are no records of how many, and not just convertibles, just across the board. Right. So it 
just takes for a car to surface mm -hmm. and be fully vetted for it to be added to the group. Interesting. So, and there are none, no Hemi Challenger convertible international shipments known to exist. Oh, okay. International shipments at the time could have been U.S. delivered cars or held cars. Mm. As long as the order was placed overseas, most commonly by our boys in Vietnam at the time, oh. who would, or they, perhaps they were getting out, out of uh, their, their commission soon and, and they, they were ready to have a, a nice hot rod available mm -hmm. when they, they showed up. So they would place the order, have it delivered to them locally in the U.S., but it would still be considered an international shipment. Um, that being said, there are none of those. So at this time, there's there's 12 Hemi Challenger convertibles now. Okay. Uh, the nine U.S. ones you know, are accounted for, mm -hmm. the three Canadian ones, no internationals. Although it is possible, one or two or however many more may appear, mm -hmm. obviously after a fully vetted process. Right. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So in total, seven four-speeds, five automatics uh, okay. for Hemi Challenger convertible production. Tw Twelve total. It's not a huge That's number. Not many at all. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> and this very car was one of the three, the first of the three that went to Canada. In fact, it was a it was a fairly or early ordered car, mm -hmm. um, and uh, ordered by this family, the Asa family up in Nova Scotia. Very remote. Very remote area. Yeah. My family's actually from Nova Scotia. Really? Yeah. Oh. Well, then you remember side. this car. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Very intimately. Saw it driving around all the time. <laughs> they bought it. The, the, the father bought it. There was a, a whole passel of kids uh, um, uh, ranging from, you know, adult age to very young, mm -hmm. uh, you know, teens or even younger. Um, but this was dad's car. However, it was dad's car only in, as purchased. Mm -hmm. The the one who ordered it, he was getting married. Oh. And he really wanted a Hemi Challenger convertible to be his wedding present from his parents. Wow. So his father gave him essentially carte blanche on the order form to go order up this car of his dreams. Amazing. And as just strange as it sounds, the day of the wedding, he backed out. No. He didn't get married. And it caused, obviously, a big stink in the family. And uh, anyway, of course, he still thought, hey, but I get my car still, right, Dad? Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. And frankly, probably because of that is the only reason I own it today. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been in touch with that family. I, I, uh, it took some time to track them down. I had, and there's a couple of them that I, I speak with fairly frequently. Very nice. Oh, that's uh, amazing. So uh, they, they have some pictures that they sent me, you know, and when they were just young kids. For example, Jamal told me that uh, riding home the day they picked it up, the mom and dad in the front, five kids piled across no. in the back seat, just sitting up on top, riding like a home. parade. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, to my knowledge of the 12, it's, it's the highest option one. And it oh, really no. is. It has so many options. It... Uh, I, I believe it's it's one of the highest option challengers out there. It oh, really, amazing. really is. It, it was equipped with nearly everything that was available with a, with a Hemi engine. Wow. Interestingly, that family assumed that if you know some small town in Nova Scotia has one, there must be hundreds, if not thousands, of these cars. <laughs> so it was just a, they drove it in the snow. Dad drove it to work. They drove wow. the kids to school. It was just, just a family, just a, car. family car. Some pictures with mom and dad around and like going to a picnic and stuff like oh, that's that. That's so cool. So anyway, yeah, yeah those, that family's been very generous. And uh, anyway, they, they sold it to a different party. They kept it for a while, started to deteriorate. Um, and uh, through some very fortunate means, they were looking for some parts. Mm -hmm. And the parts guy asked, you know, what parts are you looking for? What car is it? Oh, it's a Hemi Challenger convertible. And what? <laughs> so this is in the late 80s or so, and that was really when it, it, it became found. So a lot of these cars, somewhat hidden in plain sight, it was just yeah. took a while for these cars to get appreciated for how rare and unique they really were. Right. And this, not unlike the rest of them, for the first 10, 15 years of its life, it was just a used car. Yep. And then it started to, <laughs> to creep up. <laughs> so, um, very famous Mopar parts and uh, and 
car collector aficionado Walt Downer was the one who went up in a snowstorm and purchased it wow. and restored it and, and brought it back to its, uh, you know, its, its, its original life. Then passed through a few hands and I had the good fortune in 2004 or so. Right. That was my first Hemi convertible. I say, is this the first convertible? It was my first convertible. It took me a long time to get my first Hemi car under my belt. Mm -hmm. During that era, cars were increasing in, in value and being appreciated so much that that people were buying them, keeping them for a month or two and selling them and they were just doubling every year and it was very difficult to be able to, to have access mm -hmm. to any of them and purchase. Uh, so I, by that time I got my feet wet after several years of hunting and losing out to to big names in the hobby at the time. And I was I was very eager and I really appreciated this car for everything that it stood for. Just the huge amount of options, mm -hmm. crazy color, sublime. When there was a moment uh, that the previous owner flinched, then I, I pounced. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, that was, a, that was an exciting day. Incredible, yeah. absolutely amazing. Did you ever think that day would come when you would get that first convertible? So, we spoke a bit before about uh, my first Cuda mm -hmm. I bought out of Hemmings. Yep. Right about at the same time, there was a 71 Hemi Cuda convertible mm -hmm. uh, offered through in Hemmings. And I really, I, I only had my Torino, I hadn't spent a huge amount of money. And yeah. I remember it was like, 350k or something like wow. that, which you know, I mean, it. Who knew where they would go after that? For but sure. At the time, I've seen like a lot of money, and I, I just couldn't pony up. And uh, that was the Winchester Gray Four Speed, owned by a good friend of mine now. Um, you know, at the time, I, yeah, boy, that's a lot of money. I don't think I'm ready. Uh, I'll just wait. I mean, there, there'd be others, maybe a different color, or a bit. I, I really had no idea how rare they were, or how, yeah. and. Uh, and so I, I skipped it and I bought my far cheaper six pack. <laughs> <laughs> so very soon after, I found the error in my ways because as I started to get more knowledgeable, I go, oh my gosh, these are hard to come by. I mean, right. that was a very unique moment in time when mm -hmm. you could just find them in Hemmings. Right. Beyond that, I mean, they, they're either at the big auctions or they're sold privately or they're traded privately, that, but they, they're really a very rare and desired commodity and, and simply just don't trade hands very often. Definitely. So, um, second time around, there was a, another 71 Hemi Cuda convertible, this time a, a blue four speed, that came through eBay at the time. I eBay. remember following that auction religiously. <laughs> I couldn't believe my eyes. Neither could I, and nobody could, and that was Milt Robson, mm -hmm. very, very well-known collector, somewhat out of the fray right now, but at the time, I mean, he was the big dog, and he just swore up and down that his car was going to be the first muscle car to ever sell for a million dollars, and he was right, uh, and he just demanded it, and it sold, and then quickly resold for even higher. Mm -hmm. We at the time had the choice of buying this house <laughs> or buying that car, and, and I, I, I we made the choice of the house. But I quickly realized, oh my gosh, these things are going to out. I, I I'm doing well in my company, but right. but these things are outpacing my purchasing ability. I'm just I'm never going to own one. It's crazy. So uh, and and it is true that these cars had always been the most desirable of all the muscle car uh, genre. Uh, I mean, even in the early 80s, mm -hmm. these cars were being traded for $40,000. Sounds like a small amount now, but a brand new Corvette was $10,000, $15,000 yeah. maybe, or twenty. dollars maybe. So, I mean, it was just, uh, it was just odd that, that these cars were held in such high esteem literally mm -hmm. throughout their whole lives. There was only right. a brief period when they when they were underappreciated and just considered used cars. Yeah. Really, it only lasted for a short time. So yes, when I had that opportunity and I had the finances, I recalled back to these two previous times when I had a chance to buy. Granted, those were seventy-one Hemi Cudas, mm -hmm. you know, really the, the Mac Daddy of all the muscle cars, but. 
Hemi Challenger convertible is not far behind, and I mm -hmm. just really appreciated this particular one. It's the only four-speed in this color, and I, uh, I, I jumped on it, and I thought, wow, I, I'm the luckiest guy in the world. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know that this opportunity is ever going to come again. Right. Who, who knew about this? But I, I, yeah. at the time, I really thought, you know, these things were just going to outpace me. If I don't jump on it soon, mm -hmm. then that's it. Thank you again, Wade, for all of your time sharing stories with us about these cars. Uh, I look forward uh, to doing more of these videos with you in the future because I mean, you have so many more cars with so much more history to discuss. I'd love to, John. We are yeah. just running out of time in light <laughs> today. Light is, yeah, <laughs> we're definitely at work. And uh, yeah, we're, we uh, would love to have you back. That would be really fantastic. Well, thank you. And thanks everybody for tuning in. And until next time. If you want to be kept up to date with all the future videos, hit that subscribe button. And if you like today's video, don't forget, hit that like button, give us that thumbs up. And uh, we will see you at the next video.